All right, everyone, now we have a fear-mongering article, but it's actually, yeah, it's pretty fun. We're going to read this in brief. Trump's Project 2025 plot would take wrecking ball to U.S. institutions, key Democrat warns. Oh, wow. Jared Huffman sounds alarm over extremist manifesto for second Trump term produced by the Heritage Foundation. Yes, the idea is that Donald Trump wants to rip the bureaucracy a new asshole tearing apart certain government powers and, and uh, devolving them and uh, firing a bunch of bureaucrats and, uh, and chiefs and so forth. Uh, Huffman explained it's a two-part objective. One is to help the American people understand this is real and what's coming, because if they do understand, I think they're going to want no part of it. This is their counterbalance. The second part is the unthinkable. If Trump somehow manages to win, oh my god, we're not going to have the luxury of time. If we're reacting to these things as they're rolling out or in any way caught off guard, we're going to lose. So we've got to be ready to call it out and fight it in real time. And that means we really need to understand it now. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'm hoping that you do lose. See, here's the thing. I don't think that the establishment really has quite come around to understanding this yet. A lot of us do want to rip a new asshole into the government. We, we're voting for Trump specifically to protest you and decades and decades and decades of increasing bureaucratic largesse, uh, increasing federal power, increasing unconstitutional actions of various sorts. And, and look at the uh, SCOTUS decision you know, that's forthcoming for the Chev for Chevron deference, for example. Um, the bureaucracy, if, if SCOTUS goes against the government on that, and then Trump is re-elected and implements this policy, he's going to have carte blanche. Huzzah! I think that that's a great thing. If we could slash the bureaucracy in the United States by, let's say, a very mild... See, I'm a mild libertarian. I'm willing to negotiate. I'm willing to be at peace with the establishment because I'm mature. Let's just say we hatch it apart half of it, and I don't think that Trump will even go that far. Well, that's a lot of taxes that you save. That's a lot of hurdles that nobody has to hop through. Um, we do see that there is a precedent for Trump actually taking this sort of thing seriously, by the way. And it ain't just with Agenda 47. It was also with Agenda 45. He implemented a rule whereby if a new regulation was signed off on, they had to parse apart a bunch more regulations that were already on the books. Now, that can be lopsided. One regulation is not necessarily the same exact value as another, but it's a start. And so there's a precedent for Trump actually taking this seriously. If he implements an anti-bureaucratic project, something similar to like a Javier Malay light, something like that, gets rid of some agencies, compacts some of the others, and decides to reduce the budgets or freeze the budgets of others. Uh, effectively a Reagan-style move. They were, they were afraid that he was going to do the same thing. Trump is looking more like first-term Ronald Reagan every single day, actually. That would be a great thing. You'll notice that Reagan policies, they must be uh, uh, fairly popular because uh, Joe Biden basically plagiarized his speech on D-Day. <laughs> Even the Democrats at this point have come around to not having a terrible problem with him. There were some problems in the second term, but the first term was Morning in America again. And you had Muppets and stuff like that, and Dark Crystal, and uh, Ewok movies, and all the other good things in life. The legacy media is effectively just, just fear-mongering here. Uh, this particular article is a stink piece, but there's no stink to stink about. Um, everyone wants to cut the bureaucracy. This includes even leftoids. It's just a matter of which elements of bureaucracy and government power you want to parse out. With the left, it would be, okay, we want to defund the police. I don't necessarily support that, although I do support reforming them, and uh, the metro offices specifically. Sheriff's offices and stadies, they do a little bit better. Uh, that's, that's fine. People on the right, they want to remove you know, elements of the ATF's power, elements certainly of the FBI's power. People broadly at the center, or independents in general like I am, uh, I'm not GOP or Dem, uh, simply want to, you know, slash and burn elements of the bureaucracy. I don't care which limb you hack off, because it's basically, it's basically the flying spaghetti monster. Well, then just chop the edges off each noodle, and eventually, you know, the spaghetti monster is a little bit smaller. No offense to any pastafarians out there. The bureaucracy is bloated. It costs an enormous amount of money. At some point, bureaucracy can be important. Okay, you can raise the efficiency of the system that you're working with by paying a bit of money into it. 
When they overlap, though, so when the FBI, the ATF, the CIA, and half a dozen state agencies are all on the same case, it doesn't even make sense at some point. There was, there was a case years ago, I can't remember exactly what happened, but uh, I believe that the, the, the state police, local authorities, and the FBI were all working the same case, and they ended up entrapping each other. I can't remember exactly the ramifications of that case because I can't find the link to it anymore. I think it was in Florida, if I remember correctly. And it was some sort of like faux terrorist plot. They found out in the end, uh, once they're all in the van trying to arrest each other, they figured out the problem. This is a good example of what bureaucracy can generate. If it gets too large, it becomes inefficient. A limited amount of bureaucracy is going to be necessary for a nation state. It is unavoidable. The problem is that it tends to try to grow. It becomes cancerous, in effect. It's sort of like cancer. It just feeds itself over and over. No bureau ever wants to lose a single worker, a single power, to pay their chief less, to pay their workers less, to have less rules to enforce. It's, it's the name of the game. It's literally why they exist, and so they tend to do that. Freeze the bureaucracy in general, and then begin scalpeling it away. Okay, I'll, I'll even make a, a further negotiation here with the Unipartius. How about 15%? How about we ax 15% of the bureaus, compact the rest, and, and get rid of the overlapping functions and call it a day? Well, you'd still be able to shrink taxes by a considerable amount because the bureaucracy costs so much. And they'll try to say, well, Donald's going to go after Social Security and, you know, all of the usual... They feed that to the elderly voters, mainly even though he's come out a dozen times and confirmed the fact that he doesn't even stand with members of his own party on the issue who would want to reduce it in any way, shape, or form. Social Security is not technically a welfare program. It's just an involuntary pay-in, draw-out system. Scam? Yes. Welfare? No, technically not. Not socialistic. Simply mafioso in nature. I, uh, I support Project 25. It sounds great. Oh my God, Trump's going to take a wrecking ball to the institution? Uh, 50 years ago, liberals supported that. They thought it was a great idea. Back in the era when Meathead, uh, you know, Reiner there, wasn't just a shit poster on Twitter. You know, people like that, they supported the concept of uh, eliminating elements of the institution. They wrote songs about wanting to burn the institution to the ground. Now, all of a sudden, they've become the institution, and they're very, very comfortable with their wealth and so forth, and they're living their nimbiest lifestyles in suburbia, and so they've sold out. That's about all. Peace out.